54-degree night in St. Louis. We're at the Edward Jones Dome, the home of the NFL St. Louis Rams. And this weekend, it is the site of the Midwest Regional, starting with the semifinals here on TBS. The 13th seed in the Midwest, the Bobcats of Ohio out of the MAC Conference, taking on the number one seed, the Tar Heels of North Carolina by way of the ACC. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, along with Steve Kerr. We'll be Joined in a moment by Craig Sager working the sidelines. And as reported earlier by Craig, the big story, North Carolina will be without their starting point guard and team leader Kendall Marshall due to that fractured right wrist. So the Tar Heels will start a freshman. Stillman White making his first ever start. And Steve, he's been playing about four minutes a game. You talk about one shining moment for Stillman White. I mean, what a position to be put into. But Roy Williams told us yesterday his job is to just not lose the game for us. You don't have to win it. You just don't have to look like a backup quarterback in football. And we'll also see six foot five uh, Justin Watts, who's kind of a combo guy, play some at point guard. Now, how does Ohio head coach John Gross and his Bobcats deal with the situation tonight what's their approach well they have to deal with the big front line of North Carolina first of all Marvin that's going to be a major issue because Stillman White's job is just to get the ball into these three guys here Barnes and Zeller and Henson all three first team all ACC players and look at the combined numbers for those three guys if Carolina can take their care of the ball and get the ball inside to those three they should be in good shape but for Ohio He's, this is a really talented team, Marvin. DJ Cooper is their point guard, a guy who really sets the table for the rest of the team, and he happens to play the position uh, that, that is really going to be a problem for North Carolina. He's a point guard. He scores. He spaces the floor. This is a very well-coached team, and they're playing with extreme confidence coming off the two wins last week. And with the, the unknown factor of North Carolina, if Ohio can hang in there and make some threes, they could win this game. And Ohio players you talk to them they say we're not a cinderella team that's right they, they want respect so coming up north carolina and ohio back with the starting lineups and the opening tip in a moment shock the world outside the walls it surprises no one inside the walls we expect to play well all right let's go out and make sure we're aggressive and that we're swinging haymakers now let's go right, you got it one two three all four, all four. All four. one two three Finish. let's shock the world says ohio head coach john gross in his fourth year as the head man at ohio he has evo baltic john smith walter offit Nick Kellogg and DJ Cooper in the starting line of North Carolina with that enormous and talented front line of John Henson, Harrison Barnes, and Tyler Zeller, Reggie Bullock, and the freshman Stillman White in the backcourt as North Carolina controls. Ohio starts out in their man-to-man. -man. We'll see this a lot tonight. We'll also see some 2-3 zone. John Gross's team will mix it up trying to find the right combination. It is a traveling violation. So the ball to the Bobcats. This is only the third time North Carolina and Ohio have played their last meeting at Chapel Hill, February 2002, and Ohio won the game. Their previous meeting, North Carolina winning by 42 at home. That was back in 1985. Interesting, Marv. We see Stillman White guarding D.J. Cooper. I think that was the question mark coming in because everyone's talking about White offensively, what he'll do. Cooper is the best player on Ohio, and Stillman White gets the assignment and gets called for the foul right away. Off the drive by Offit. Reaching called on White. 
And there's Roy Williams, the Hall of Famer. He's won two national championships, reached seven Final Fours. You saw Kendall Marshall sitting it out. Offit gets inside. And back come the Tar Heels. A record of 31 and 5 during the regular season. Barnes is off. And that big front line gets right to it. Tyler Zeller, the senior from Washington, Indiana. Well, North Carolina is the number one rebounding team in the country with a rebounding margin of better than plus 10. And if North Carolina can just take care of the ball and get shots up, they may not even need to make them because they'll be there for offensive rebounds. Cooper firing away. And it's kept alive by Baltic. Evo Baltic pops it out to Offit. Offit. Yes. Walter Offit, who had a huge game on Sunday against South Florida, 7 of 9, 4 of 4 from downtown. This is a perimeter oriented team, Marv, with Offit. Also with Nick Kellogg, the three point shooter. And we also mentioned Cooper, of course. They're not going to get a whole lot of scoring inside. So they're going to have to make threes. I, I think they've got to make probably 10 to 15 threes to win this game. Follows on John Smith as you look at John Gross of Ohio. Guy with lots of energy, lots of enthusiasm. Used to drink five cups of coffee a day. And Steve, he <laughs> says it's now down to two a day, although no one believes him. <laughs> I don't think he needs coffee. Not, not during the tournament anyway. Just underway. Here in St. Louis, Kellogg with the rebound. Kellogg, the son of our colleague, Clark Kellogg, an excellent three-point shooter. Up it fires for three. And back comes the freshman, Stillman White. He is guarded by Cooper. That's it inside. John Henson, who has made it back from a sprained left wrist. Although that has uh, become secondary to the injury suffered by Kendall Marshall. Yeah, nobody talks about Henson's wrist anymore, but it looked fine on that play. Players uh, kidding Henson saying here just yesterday. Baltic. Fred Hustle kept alive. Cooper is on it. Smith tried to set the screen. It's just shocking when you see up close the size differential between these two clubs. Carolina, other than White at the point guard, is just bigger at every position. Oh, what a move by Offit. As he whipped by Zeller, who was looking for the for the rejection. Well, Marvin, when we talked to John Gross yesterday, he said we have to limit the easy baskets in in the half court you see the grimace there maybe the wrist is bothering him a little bit but gross said we, we got to limit transition baskets and the easy ones in the half court and that's too easy they can't give up those those back kick layup type hoops because carolina will just feast on those if you give them to him Barnes shot was deflected short as zeller right there for the follow reggie keely a 6'8 junior has come on for ohio he's usually an early sub for john smith I think this game is really interesting in terms of tempo. Our both clubs aren't really sure what to expect without Kendall Marshall. And John Gross, normally a, a coach that doesn't like to play really fast tempo, as we see an offensive foul there, I believe, on Keeley. But I think I think Gross needs to kind of figure out what's going to happen out here without Marshall and what tempo his team needs to play. The officiating crew, Tom Eads, Don Daly, and Kelly Self, as Keeley picks up a quick one of the ball back to the Tar Heels. A steal by Cooper. Four minutes gone by, and a 6-4 lead for North Carolina. Cooper firing one up, Zeller is on it. Justin Watts is in the ball game. we already in for Stillman White. I would look for both those players to, to share the point guard responsibilities. There's another offensive board for Zella. This time could not finish. That comes Cooper. AJ Cooper averaging 15 a game to lead the Bobcats. Baltic. 
Ivo Baltic out of Kansas City, his dad from the Czech Republic. Very important player in this game as Barnes can't get the turnaround to go. Bal Baltic on that loose ball. No, and the reason he's important, Marv, is because he can space the floor as a four-man. Cooper trying too much in transition. Kolok gets it down low. And here's Shutter. Third field goal. He has six points off Carolina with an 8-4 lead. And I think Roy Williams has to be pretty happy, Marv. Carolina playing with good tempo, good pace. They're, they're getting the ball up the floor even without Marshall. Kellogg passed on a three. Baltic. And he's the guy who will be open. Let in or dunk for Henson. And John Gross needs to get a timeout here. Ohio looks a little out of sorts here early. And the size of Carolina has been a major issue. There's the block for Zeller. And then at the other end, just too much size down low. Thank you, Greg. Couple of substitutions for Ohio. T.J. Hall and Ricardo Johnson have come out for the first time. This is all rejected by Zeller and last touch by Ohio. North Carolina inserting James Michael McAdoo, the 6'9 freshman, and P.J. Hairston, another freshman, as we go to break with North Carolina in front of Ohio, 10-4. Welcome back to St. Louis where North Carolina leads Ohio by the score of 10 to 4. With Kendall Marshall out with that broken wrist, Carolina has turned to the relatively unknown freshman, Stillman White. Last year he was playing for Brett Queen at Goddard High School in Wilmington, North Carolina. I called Coach Queen this afternoon and he said that Stillman is very athletic and quick. And although he is under 6 feet tall, he used to jump center and he controlled most of the tips. As to answer your question, Steve, he said he used to guard the opposing team's best player, and he did have the ability to stay in front of him. Despite how he does today or the rest of this tournament, his competitive basketball days will be through for a while. At the end of the school year, he is fulfilling a two-year Mormon mission. So, yes, this indeed could be just one shining moment. All right, all right. <laughs> Stillman White playing the first four minutes, replaced by Justin Watts. North Carolina back on it. Here's Bullock and a pull-up. Reggie Bullock. Sophomore out of Kingston, North Carolina, moved into the starting lineup late January after Dexter Strickland went out for the year with a torn ACL. Nice feed from Cooper. Keeley not able to hit. The story for the Tar Heels early, Tyler Zeller, 6.6 rebounds and two block shots. Zeller with the jump hook. Tyler Zeller, all ACC first team. The ACC Player of the Year and the nation's academic All-American of the Year. And just dominating this smaller Ohio team, Marvin. To this point, Carolina has done a decent job of handling the ball. They haven't gotten hurt, at least in, with live turnovers. And so everything for Ohio in the half court. Keeley gets fouled. He'll go to the line. And this is Zeller's favorite move here. Right-handed jump hook. He just gets it off so quick. Not great extension on that, but he's so much bigger than his opponent there. He can just turn and shoot right over the top. Hairston on the foul. So Keeley at the line looking to stop a 10-0 run by North Carolina. You can watch every game on the road to the Final Four live on your computer, iPad, iPhone, or select Android phones with NCAA March Madness Live. Visit NCAA.com slash March Madness for more information. Well, I think John Gross has to reevaluate his game plan right now we haven't seen any pressure up the floor to this point and Carolina really handling things easily and then dominating in the half court I think he may have to start thinking about employing the 2-2-1 zone press that we've seen them use from time to time this year and try to speed this game up I know Carolina likes to play fast but if it's a half court game and it's about height 
Ohio's in huge trouble. Traveling violation called on Harrison Barnes. So the ball back to Ohio. The Bobcats 29 and 7. The Mid-American Tournament champions. They started the season 12 and 1. One loss at Louisville. They stumbled a bit, then turned it in time for the conference tournament. They've won six in a row. They've won 10 of their last 11. Here's Hall on the drive. Ooh. Nice reverse by T.J. Hall. Well, they've got a lot of guys like Hall who can put the ball on the floor, get to the rim. And they're very athletic. Reaching and foul is called on Hall. Well, we saw Offit get off to a quick start. Now Hall gets into the action. Look at that beautiful reverse lay in. Cooper is the guy that John Gross needs to get going. His star point guard who has gotten off to a slow start. But if they can get all three of those guys starting to penetrate, now all of a sudden they can get into the drive and kick game and start knocking down some of those threes. John Smith returning for Ohio. Here is Barnes. That's a three for Harrison Barnes. Who shoots 38% from downtown? Stevie Taylor is coming at the point and fires away. Shot selection is a question with uh, Stevie Taylor. Who knocks it away from Watts and out of bounds. Last touch by North Carolina. Break of the action. We'll be right back. Let's so look at our tournament summary and some. The highlights to this point, Billy Donovan's Gators making their fourth Elite Eight appearance the last seven years. Rick Pitino's Cardinals of Louisville in their third Elite Eight appearance. State of Ohio well represented. And at the half, uh, Xavier trailing better by seven points in the game on CBS. Uh, Smith makes his move, a traveling violation. is called Ohio, Steve, three of 15 from the field. The Tar Heels 8 for 14, and they have out-rebounded Ohio 13 to 5. Well, they've definitely been overwhelmed by the size of Carolina. I wonder if they're overwhelmed by the enormity of the environment here. I, I, I'll bet they have not played in a dome before as McAdoo loses the ball growing up. But this is a different situation for Ohio. Carolina's been here pretty much every year. They look like the more settled team. Fake by Baltic, and then a bad pass. Stroman White. On the floor, starting at the point for Kendall Marshall, then sat for several minutes. Baltic with the rebound. Hooper with a one hot pass, and it's deflected away from Smith. But Bullock with a great defensive play after the feed from Cooper looked like he was going to lead to a lay in. And the other end, Bullock comes up short, one headed by Offit. Here comes Cooper. And by White. Cooper to three. And that may not look like a good shot, and frankly it wasn't more, but John Gross has to live with some of those from Cooper. He has to play with that swagger and that confidence. And when he gets going, even with some of those bad shots, that's when this team is really at its best. Cooper shoots about 36% from the field. Nice pass from White and a foul. Foul committed by Baltic. But even though Cooper has struggled with the shot still has the green light and he should I mean he, he's the engine for this club we've seen him hit so many big shots and not only in this tournament but throughout the season he was the MVP of the Mac tournament averaged 20 points seven assists so he's the guy who makes them go they've got to live with some long-range shots from him John Henson at the line, only a 58% free throw shooter. Zeller comes back from McAdoo. This year, enjoy more madness with Coke Zero. Text CAMP to 2653 for a chance to attend an ultimate basketball camp with three of your friends. Marv Albert with Steve Kerr, Craig Sager. We're at the Edward Jones Dome, St. Louis, Missouri. Halfway through this first half and it has been all North Carolina Cooper's pass off the oh there's an offensive foul Cooper pushing off on Stillman White White doing a great job fighting over numerous screens there with a little help from Tyler Zeller and then once the play breaks down Cooper gets a little frustrated forearm shiver easy call for the official so nice job by Stillman White 
For North Carolina, their 43rd appearance in the NCAA tournament. That dates back to 1941 as Bullock hits a three. Picking up where he left off, made three three-pointers against Creighton. Bullock with a, just a beautiful looking stroke. Offit using the screen from Baltic. Crossover by Baltic. Radigo Glass said it was deflected short. You see, he is rattled by Henson's length, and I don't blame him. Three point attempt is off this time, and it's it is saved by Kellogg. Here's Cooper and comes up short. Zeller. Foul is called on North Carolina Zeller over the back. That's his first. And the Tar Heels fourth team foul. Well, the strength of this Ohio team is really their ball movement. And, and when they start playing well, it's when the ball goes from one side to the other, penetrate, kick, make the extra pass. But Carolina has not even allowed that to happen uh, because their defense is so long and active. And Ohio just hasn't gotten into any kind of rhythm offensively at all. Ball was off. Coming up on eight and a half remaining in this first half. White played by Cooper. And the ball deflected out following the miss by Hairston. So the Bobcats back in control. This is Ohio's first trip to the Sweet 16 since the NCAA tournament expanded to its current format. They did have a great run two years ago where they upset Georgetown in the first round before losing to Tennessee. Several of the players on this club were there. And I think that's been a factor as Kellogg lines up the three and knocks it down. But the experience of the tournament getting those couple games under their belt for guys like Cooper I think very important for this club first three for Ohio they missed the previous six and that was the first shot attempted by Kellogg offensive foul on Barnes Barnes picking up his first Tar Heels by 11 Back in St. Louis, North Carolina up 11, really utilizing their length and size so far. Here's a perfect example. Look at the back pick coming. Baltic gets caught on the screen. Henson goes right to the rim and off it, neglects to help. There's the catch and the easy lay-in. But the size at both ends of the floor has been a major problem for Ohio. Another turnover by Ohio leading to that. P.J. Hairston. So North Carolina now 10 for 21 shooting. Ohio just 19 percent, four of 21 from the field. It's a big sequence there too because the three from Kellogg kind of swayed the momentum just a little bit. It felt like Ohio had a glimmer, and then the quick turnover, easy hoop for Carolina, and they're right back in control. And Reggie Keeley threw up a knuckleball on that that hook shot. He represents the Bobcats size at 6'8", about 265. And he's a guy who likes to score, averages about nine per game, but normally does it against smaller players. He's not used to playing against this kind of size in the match. White lost it, able to recover, and picks up an assist with the feed to Tyler Zeller. And now John Gross takes a timeout for Ohio with just under seven minutes to go. First half. Welcome back to the Midwest Regional Semifinals on TBS. As we look at our game summary, you see the poor shooting by Ohio. Seven turnovers for North Carolina, but zero fast break points for the Bobcats. Yeah, most of the turnovers have basically been dead ball situations. They haven't been able to create any live ones, so as a result, no easy hoops for Ohio. Cooper gets the screen from Keeley, but he's met by Zeller. The winner between North Carolina and Ohio will go against the winner between Kansas and NC State coming up later. 
to be on to the Elite Eight. That is a three for Nick Kellogg. So he has attempted two shots. He's hit both from downtown. It's been basically their whole offense uh, to this point, minus uh, a couple of buckets early for Offit. Pushing foul. It is on Hall. Kellogg is 42% from three-point range. He has hit now 79 three-pointers among the leaders uh, in the conference. And only 21 two-pointers on the year for Kellogg. So he's a guy who really looks for that three-point line and feeds off of the penetration from Cooper. Deflected out last touch by Ohio. This is day two of the Sweet 16. The winners move on to Sunday's Elite Eight. Justin Watts back on the floor, coming on for Stillman White. He's played eight minutes. Hairston with a quick release. Last touch by Ball to try to save it off the deflection from Keeley. So Tar Heels have a new shot clock. Frustration for John Gross and his team. Even on the missed shot when Carolina doesn't get the rebound, they pose such a threat that Ohio ends up deflecting the ball out of bounds. This time Baltic took it away from Zeller. Kellogg moves to the front court. Kellogg's pass batted away, recovered by Keeley. Offit for three. Yes. Walter Offit with seven points. And you can hear the Ohio portion of this crowd respond. And that's their game. Mark, uh, penetrate, get into the lane, and find the open shooters. They made nine threes against South Florida last weekend, and that's how they were able to win that game. I could do a strip. Zeller had it knocked away, and it's last touch by Zeller. The Bobcats get it back. It is spurred here by Ohio. Yeah, and I think Carolina or has probably shot a little bit too much from the perimeter. They have such a big advantage inside. I know Roy Williams' team's DNA really is to, to, to get out and run and shoot and fire away, but they have such a big advantage in this game. I think they've got to pound it inside first. That's an offensive foul. Off the drive by Offit. The basket will not count. Great play by Tyler Zeller, who actually leads the North Carolina team in charges taken this year. That's his 25th of the season. Also has 50 blocks, and it's rare that you see a big man who does both. Most big men are either charge takers or shot blockers, but the level of sophistication defensively for Zeller is really impressive. He, he can read the situation and then make his decision whether to take the charge or go for the block. Just under five minutes remaining. First half. Knocked away from Zeller. So Ohio now doing a good job. Last couple of possessions on Zeller. Cooper finding Bolton. Rebounded by Watts. This is where you see North Carolina really miss Kendall Marshall on the post feeds. And Watts with the turnover. And this is Cooper playing at home. Well, one thing I've taken from this first half, Bob, is that Stillman White is much more suited to play point than Watts. Watts has turned it over three times now. He does not look comfortable at all handling the ball. 8-0 run by Ohio. Four straight turnovers by North Carolina. Watts gets it inside and a foul. Foul on the catch made by McAdoo. Here's where Watts gets himself in trouble. There's nowhere to go. Don't lose the game. Just, you know, do, all you have to do is make smart plays at the point. That's what Roy Williams talked about yesterday at practice. You don't have to win it for us. Just don't lose it. So make the smart play. Throw it to the perimeter. Let somebody else make the post feed and play off your bigs. Foul committed by Hall of Ohio. That is his third. And here is James Michael McAdoo, 6'9", freshman from Norfolk, Virginia. Averages just under six points per game. It's one and one for McAdoo. Ohio battling back now within seven. Cooper with the pass. Cooper for three. A long range three, but it's, it's kept alive by Smith. 
Baltic, nice spin. They swing it. A long three once again, this time coming up way short. But Ohio starting to look like itself. Well, they've got a bounce to their step. They're moving the ball. Baltic just made a beautiful move. It was a great offensive possession. They just weren't rewarded for it. Eight unanswered for Ohio. That ends right there off the bank shot. The other thing Caroline has to think about, Marv, as this game goes on, all post feeds should be in the air. Don't throw bounce passes against a smaller, quicker team down low. Johnson not able to hit, and it's last touch by Henson of North Carolina. Tyler Zeller getting set to check back in. We'll be right back. Coming up on AT&T on behalf, Ernie Johnson, Steve Smith, Seth Davis, and Virginia Commonwealth head coach Chaka Smart will take you out for a live look at Beller Xavier on CBS, plus all the latest NCAA tournament news, all coming up on AT&T at the half. Uh, Jim Vance and Nick's dad, Clark Kellogg, calling <laughs> the game over on CBS. I'm sure that uh, Clark is getting updates. I bet he's got the, the iPad going. Oh, yeah. That's got to be tough. Broadcasting a game while your son is playing in the Sweet 16. Tough to focus. North Carolina has led by as many as 15. They've been hurt by turnovers. They've committed 11. Baltic ah! running out. Second shot he's had that has been halfway down and rolled out. Frustrating. That's a shot that he normally makes. Baltic is 0 for 6 from the field. You can see uh, Zeller, the seven footer, towering over Baltic. Henson coming up short, deflected out last touch by Ohio. A moment ago, Marv, we saw a near over and back from Nick Kellogg. You see mm. his foot is over, but technically the ball, I guess the official is saying the ball did not cross that line. Looked to me like the ball did cross the plane. Another North Carolina turnover. Cooper for three. Cooper able to chase it down. Cooper goes for the crossover and sets it up for nothing. Rebounded by Bullock. Cooper just one for eight now. Ball take 0 for six. So two guys Ohio really counts on. One for 14. Whoa. A <laughs> couple of extra steps. And the ball back to Ohio. On the walk by Henson. Let's go to Craig. Well, Steve mentioned at the beginning that uh, perhaps Ohio didn't look comfortable. Maybe the enormity of the building at yesterday's open practice, Coach John Gross told everybody, take as many shots, looking at as many angles as you possibly can. They do not have any experience playing in a dome. That game two years ago when they beat Georgetown was uh, at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Oh. As for North Carolina, <laughs> no problems with sight lines. Remember, they opened the season on an aircraft carrier against Michigan State. Steve, I know you shot around here uh, yesterday with, I must say, great success. You were not bothered by the dome. Of course, there's nobody defending against you. <laughs> Here's Kellogg with his third three. Carolina are losing sight defensively of their assignment. They know Kellogg is the best three-point shooter on this team. 42% coming into this game. They can't possibly leave him on a set play like that. Ohio with him. Six, seven turnovers the last five minutes. The North Carolina Zeller again, and he's fouled as he hits the floor. Helped up by D.J. Cooper, so Zeller will go to the line. Well, just an enormous advantage, literally and figuratively, for Carolina and Zeller in here. I thought he got fouled on the first one. But Ohio doing everything it can defensively to try to keep them out of the paint, but they have no chance without the, the physical bodies to do so. Off it on the foul of second. Tyler Zeller, 82% free throw shooter. As we mentioned earlier, the ACC Player of the Year and the first North Carolina senior to win that award since back in 1978. Four forwards and the academic All American of the Year. We're talking about the entire nation. That's last touch by Ohio, the last person to win both ACC Player of the Year and be the Academic All-American of the Year. Shane Battier did it for Duke back in 2001. Mom and Dad are proud. I mean, not only Tyler, obviously, but got Kobe playing for Indiana in Sweet 16 later tonight. Older brother Luke played at Notre Dame. 
In fact, all three brothers were Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana in the span of seven years. I mean, that, that's crazy. Here's Cooper. One-handed by Henson. Three-point attempt off by Barnes, kept alive by Zeller. He swings it. Here's White for three. And the foul called on North Carolina. That's uh, over the back. Foul on Bullock. Roy Williams was not happy with White on that shot, Marvin, even though he was open and in rhythm. Uh, I think he, he wants his guys, all of them, really, to continue to pound the ball inside, particularly with Marshall on the sideline. Now, if that shot had gone, it's one of those shots that, hey, it's, it's a great look, it's a great shot, that gets him going. But because it missed, I always hated that as a player. When you miss a shot, it's a play. It's into a bad one. So, hey, how'd you take that shot? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Healy makes it. Swept aside and saved. Ends up in the hands of Bullock. And North Carolina will hold for a final shot of the half. Ohio able to get back into this trailing by as many as 15. Down by seven. Final seconds. First half. Barnes. Kellogg with the rebound. And John Bruce. As that goes off glass, has to be happy that his team came back after the poor start for shooting by Ohio, but they end the half on an 11 3 run. I think he has to be thrilled because Carolina was in total control of this game. They got a little out of their game plan, and a couple threes from Kellogg really got the Bobcats going. All right, let's go to Craig Sager. Craig. Well, coach, a tough spot for a learning experience by Stillman White. How do you think he did? Well, our whole offense is not very smooth right now. We missed some shots, but we can't turn it over that many times. And it wasn't just still when everybody was turning over. We've got to get better. Well, we've got to get shots first, and hopefully they'll be good ones. Tyler Zeller appears they have the hot hand. Do you want to keep going to him? Well, we need to. We have an advantage in there, but we've got to convince our guys to do that. All right, thanks a lot. We're at intermission with a score. North Carolina 29, Ohio 22. We'll send you to the AT&T at the half after a quick break. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. We're in great shape, fellas. 29-22, I mean, it's a seven-point game. That's three possessions. There's 20 more minutes to go. If you will guard like you guarded the last 10 minutes, that's going to get us out in transition. And then we just got to step up and make a few plays. We got to land a blow the first four minute war. Fight, 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 fight. Well, you got it. One, two, three. Call for one, one, two, three. Right? Ohio head coach John Gross's team down by seven and trailing by as many as 15, 13 turnovers hurting the Tar Heels, but Ohio right back in it with that 11-3 run at the end of the half. The big story for North Carolina, the play of seven-footer Tyler Zeller, 11 points, nine rebounds, two block shots. Well, he was dominant in that first half, and any time Carolina went inside to him, something good happened, and on this pos possession, you'll see off it leaves a little bit early underneath the basket, and then Cooper, not quite enough help, and Zeller just turns right over that left shoulder and knocks down the jump hook. So total domination in the paint, 18 to 6 in points in the paint for Carolina. Meanwhile, for Ohio, Nick Kellogg was on fire, 3 for 3 from the three-point line. Basically kept his team in it. And Marv, if you take Kellogg out of the equation, the rest of the team, 5 for 32 from the floor. That's why John Gross is pretty pleased to be where he is because you know Cooper will get going eventually. But he's got to, his team has to feel some confidence here knowing that Carolina's out of whack and the Bobcats have not played very well at all and yet they're right in it. Problem with the clock so they, they restart. You see DJ Cooper just one of nine from the field. Mentioned Vic Kellogg, the son of Rosie and Clark Kellogg. Our colleague, CBS Sports, pretty fair player in his own right for yeah. Ohio State and is a member of the Indiana Pacers. Harrison Barnes doing a much better job staying on Kellogg that possession. Off it for three. Walter off it with 10 points. The North Carolina lead is down to four. 
And I think that's got to be the focus of the Ohio offense. Or penetrate, kick, make the extra pass, keep it moving. Barnes is off. Back come the Bobcats. The point guard, D.J. Cooper. Nice pass to Smith, but not able to convert. It is a tie-up and the possession arrow in favor of North Carolina. Well, this is what you have to do when you play against a team with great size. Stretch them out. Put three-point shooters all over the floor. But in the first half, Marv, they weren't able to get that spacing and get that rhythm. That was a great possession there. Ohio has a bounce to its step. You can tell they've got some confidence going now. They're, they're in the game emotionally. The freshman Stillman White played 12 minutes in that first half. 13 points now for Zeller. Three assists for White. 0 for 2 from the field. Justin Watts did play some at the point. There's no question. North Carolina missing their point guard and team leader, Kendall Marshall. Off the steal. Henson taking the distance. Mark, you mentioned Kendall Marshall, team leader. And even with the 13 turnovers for Carolina, I think that was the key that what you talk about, the team leadership part of it. He is their unquestioned leader. He's the guy who gets them together. They looked totally disjointed in that first half. And when things went bad, they weren't, they weren't together. White with the steal, rejected by Smith. But Zella right there. And how about the team leader being a sophomore? Well, timeout is taken by Ohio. North Carolina with six unanswered. And there's the steal from White. He has been really good in this game defensively. He deserves to play this whole half. In St. Louis, let's take a look at the Infinity Coaches Spotlight. John Gross, head coach of Ohio, longtime assistant, spent quite a bit of time with Thad Mata in his fourth year as the hitman of the Bobcats of Ohio. Nice pass underneath, and the reverse by Reggie Keeley. So North Carolina's lead is now down to eight. Here's Henson, and he draws. The foul. I mentioned earlier, John Gross, as we have seen from his locker room talks, got lots of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. Used to drink five cups of coffee a day, says he's down to two. And his assistant coaches say he sleeps with his eyes open. <laughs> did you see anything wrong did, with that? Did you make that up? You, you did. No, I did not. You did not. He is a one time high school math teacher. Despite that, you know, spending some time with him yesterday, just feeling his energy and his enthusiasm and, and seeing how well coached his team is, it wouldn't shock me to see his name on a lot of lists. You know, there's some, some jobs available. You know, obviously, the Illinois job is is open to somebody. John Gross's name will be mentioned, I think. Well, there have been reports already as Zeller is not able to hit. Zeller on the rebound, pops it right back up, and he draws the foul. Yeah, he's, he's a hot head coach with the way things have gone for his Ohio team this season. There were reports out of Nebraska mm -hmm. about a number of people, including John and that the Cornhuskers might take a run, and Illinois has been mentioned. And fair or not, you know, when you get to the Sweet 16 as a mid-major, you, you know, you get so much exposure that you automatically have a leg up over the competition. And there's a lot of great coaches out there who maybe don't advance this far and they don't get recognized, but give Gross credit not only for the, the job he's done this year, but in the tournament two years ago beating Georgetown. Those things get recognized. Foul was on Evo Baltic, his third, so he is replaced. As uh, Keeley checks back in. White trying to throw the charge on Cooper. Cooper and looking for the left-hand corner stepped out of bounds stepped on the baseline This was a matchup that I think Roy Williams had to be concerned about to start this game DJ Cooper The star guard against Stillman white white has gotten the better of him obviously with help from his large friends But his defensive work has been fantastic here that pass surprised Zeller Hold on. 
puck. Rebounded by Henson, and he is fouled. So Henson, out of the act, will go to the line. Foul on Smith. That is his second. Get the latest gear for your team at the official store of the NCAA. Find great boots merchandise at NCAA.com slash shop. Air ball. Thrown up by, by Henson. John Henson, a senior out of Durham, North Carolina. He's become one of the most dominating defensive forces in the country. All ACC first team, all defensive team for the second straight season. It is kept alive, and Henson is off. Another foul is called. It is on Ohio. Once again, it's on Walter Offit. That's his third. Marv, here's what you were talking about. Three all ACC first teamers from one squad, Barnes, Henson, and Zeller, to go along with Rivers and Scott. The strip. Good play by Offit, leading to this. Offit, blows the layup. Well, there's a reason he blew it, and it's because of the long arm of Henson trailing the play. Ohio constantly aware of that size, both Zeller and Henson around the basket, forcing so many of these misses. Now Bullock comes up hobbling, and he will head to the bench. P.J. Hairston comes in, and Marv, you get the sense that Carolina has sort of found its footing here, game plan-wise, in this second half. They're not forcing up long-range shots. They're being very patient, getting the ball swung side to side and pounding it inside. And as long as they do that, they should control this second half. White getting it into the corner. It's a bad shot. It's just a bad shot. You, you get out of the game plan, pound it into Zeller, and play off of him. Too quick there. Battle up by nine over Xavier on CBS with about four minutes remaining. As Offit converts on a three. And that's the result. Long shot, long rebound leads to offensive flow at the other end. It wasn't a fast break basket, but it was a tempo basket. That's why Carolina has to continue to do this. Get it inside and then play off it. Barnes coming up short. He's been off. And a travel is called. So the ball back to the Bobcats. Tar Heels by seven. We'll be back to St. Louis in a moment. 13th seed Ohio has made it to the Sweet 16 by defeating Michigan. Michigan, the fourth seed, and the knocking off South Florida. Steve, here's how MAC teams have fared since 1985, since the expansion to the current format. Kent State, the only team to advance to the Elite Eight. That was the club led by Antonio Gates, the Chargers tight end. They eventually lost to Indiana. But the, the MAC has, has had some. Excellent basketball teams and a lot of great coaches have gone through that conference on their way to major schools. Just Hall will just check back in, flipping it out off it. Yes, another three. That's his fourth of the night, and Ohio within four after trailing by as many as 15 back in the first half. Offit has 16 points, nine of the 16 here in the second half. Well, all the scoring really has come from Offit and Kellogg. Cooper has not been able to get going, but the threes from those two guys has kept this club in it. You can see from the bench's reaction, they're, they're feeling confident. At the other end, I'm not sure about the body language of North Carolina. Harrison Barnes in particular, a very disappointing game for him with the leader, Kendall Marshall, out. You'd expect Barnes to step up. And he's just one for ten right now. Now that is a five-second. Now apparently a timeout was called, just eluding the five-second violation. Timeout called by the Tar Heels. Ohio staying in this one with its three-point shooting. They've made seven now, and here's a, a good look at the first points of the half for Ohio. The drive and kick, that's Ohio's game. Spread you out, penetrate, get moving, and we see a turnover there on the out-of-bounds play from Carolina. 16th turnover committed by North Carolina. Getting back to Walter Offit has helped Ohio get back into it. He's a transfer from Ohio State. Playing a total of 23 games for the Buckeyes as a reserve over two years. Spent some time at Wright State, which is near Dayton. And 
Gardner now doing it for Ohio. Averaging 12 points, shooting the three very well here tonight. Kellogg got it inside, balls it, pops it out. Hall for three. Yes! It is a one point. Carolina lead. How about the pass from Baltic? And that's what he does. Marvie's kind of a mid-range player. Gets in there, puts the ball on the floor, and then a wonderful passer once he forces the defense's reaction. All right. That was... I thought it counted. Yeah, it sure looked like it. Watts has come on for White. Had some difficulties playing the point in the first half, and a reach-in on Cooper, who is looking for the steal. Watch this move from Baltic. He drives, draws Zeller into the action, and when you can space the floor with your bigs, like T.J. Hall here, now all of a sudden it doesn't matter what kind of size you've got defensively in the paint. Ricardo Johnson coming on for Walter off at Ohio with nine unanswered. They've hit three consecutive from beyond that three-point line. And can Carolina find any offensive rhythm? They just haven't been able to get the ball into the post where their advantage is. Obviously, Marshall's absence a huge factor here. Barnes. I should say Henson able to knock it down from straight away. It's a big shot. Carolina desperately needs some points, some momentum, and some confidence. So the Tar Heels by three. Six minutes gone by, second half. Baltic with a nice move and scores on the reverse. Went right at Henson. And Zeller couldn't help because he had just helped out and given up the, the three-pointer to Hall. So that time he stayed on the perimeter. White got it inside. And it's deflected out. Last touch by the Tar Heels and the Bobcats have an opportunity to take the lead for the first time tonight. Look at the move from Baltic. Same move he made last time when he found T.J. Hall for the three. This time he lays it in on the reverse. Carolina more of showing some frustration. You can see it in their faces and their body language and the crowd here from the Ohio section really getting into it. Cooper gets the pick from Baltic. Cooper pops it out. Three-point attempt. Hall came up short. Zeller and doubled, deflected, but kept alive by Barnes. And that is an offensive foul. A push off called on Harrison Barnes, his second foul. Well, Kendall Marshall may not have made that first team all ACC team like Barnes and Zeller and Henson did, but he's the most important player on this Tar Heel team, and we can see why. Barnes is nowhere near the player he is without his point guard feeding him and getting him into the flow of the game. The winner between North Carolina and Ohio will face the winner between Kansas and North Carolina State. Second of our doubleheader here on TBS. Cooper got the step. Cooper came up short. Cooper gets it back. Thought that might have been a double dribble. Mm. And the Carolina fans all signaling for that in the stands. Cooper watched by Watts. Cooper got the step on the fade. Oh, missed the follow. And it's deflected out. Last touch by Ohio. Mark Cooper just one for ten in this game. But he's one of those players where if he can just hit one shot, his confidence is right there. And the way this game is playing now with Ohio really stretching out the Carolina defense, if Cooper can get a couple of those runners to go, it will energize the entire team and really get Ohio going. James Michael McAdoo, the 6'9 freshman, has come back for North Carolina. Ricardo Johnson returns for Ohio. Watts has to be very careful. Stevie Taylor, the freshman for Ohio, puts on a lot of ball pressure. And Ohio among the leaders in the nation in steals. They have nine thus far today. That is reflected out. Last touch by Ohio. Boy, a tough call there for the Bobcats. Looked to me like Zeller got a hand on it as the ball went out of bounds. John Gross agrees with me. I think let's take a look here. The deflection, yep, right there from Zeller. They missed that one. 
Walks had trouble inbounding. Good pressure here by the Bobcats. Here's Barnes for three. Kept alive by the Tar Heels. Offensive foul. Zeller coming together with Keeley, and the foul is on Tyler Zeller. One point, North Carolina lead. We'll be right back. Greg, one point lead by North Carolina. The Tar Heels ranked number one to start the season, finished up fifth in the coaches' poll, fourth in the AP, going up against the Bobcats of Ohio, who have come back from a 15 point deficit. That rims out for Nick Kellogg. Wow. Halfway down for Kellogg and Cooper now well, getting into the lane really causing the Carolina defense a lot of problems opening up some looks on the perimeter Bullock for three Reggie Bullock he has eight points but Tar Heels up by four well you mentioned all those rankings Marv and the seed and everything else this is not that same Carolina team that was that finished in the top five in the rankings. So we'll find out now if they can almost reinvent themselves in the Sweet 16. A tough thing to do when your point guard goes out of the game. And they've looked very uncomfortable, particularly after that first eight, 10 minute stretch of the game. Stillman White playing 17 minutes, 0 for 3 from the field, but has four assists. And uh, Justin Watts in there right now as the Foul is called. Roy Ohio. Williams, excuse me, Marvin. Roy Williams is so frustrated. You know what's interesting? I, I always think it's more difficult for the team with the most talent to make adjustments during a game. If you think about it, you know, Carolina almost always has more talent than their opponents. And they, they're a system program. They play the same style over and over again. And it reminds me a little bit of the Kansas Purdue game last year last week when Purdue got Kansas out of its rhythm and its routine. That's what's happened here. So can Carolina adapt here with everything going wrong? Stillman White has checked back in that last foul on Keeley of Ohio. Baltic is back. Kellogg gets it down low. Baltic off the head fake. That's a three-pointer for Offit who just checked back in. Walter Offit has been on fire. He now has 19 points. 12 have come in the second half. And Baltic has been fantastic here in the second half. Or just his activity offensively forcing rotations and opening up looks. Barnes continues to struggle. Foul is called, though, on Ohio. A holding foul. Foul on Baltic, and that is number four. Anytime you can get a big who can pass and, and move, it really forces strange rotations for the defense. And that's what's opened up this offense here for Ohio in the second half. He's been great, but that's a, a huge foul, Marv. Number four for Baltic. And Ohio will have to rely on Cooper and his penetration for its offense. Bobcats are now over the limit. One and one here for Zeller. Good box out by Keeley. Ten minutes to play. Second half. Ohio within one. North Carolina has led all the way. They've led by as many as 15. Keeley. Trying to change his shot as he was met by the seven-footer Zeller. What a pass. Beautifully done. Zeller now has 19. How about Zeller? The block at one end, and then he runs the floor, beats everybody down the floor. Poor transition defense from Ohio. Three-point lead for the Tar Heels. Keeley again anticipating Zeller and his last touch by Keeley. Now the officials will talk about it, and they change their mind. Apparently last touch by Zeller. Yeah, Zeller is affecting so many of these shots, and he's doing a smart thing. He's backing away from Keeley, and there he swipes at it. That was a, a tough one to see. 
but Zeller is going to get a breather here. He's done a nice job of forcing Keeley to try to shoot through him. Keeley not Whoa. comfortable with that. The steal by McAdoo. James Michael McAdoo. 6 9 freshman off the steal. And extends the lead to five. Just can't afford any mistakes if you're Ohio. You can't give away any points in a game like this. And White shaken up as he went down. Cooper for three. Yes. DJ Cooper, who has struggled with the shot, able to knock down a three. Pass picked off. Off it with another Bobcat steal. We'll see if that gets Cooper going. Cooper, 2 of 13 from the field. Offit makes the turn. Kellogg, yes! Ohio by one. Bullock. Bullock able to get it down low, and McAdoo is fouled. They're feeling it, Mark. Ohio now believes because not only are they scoring, but they're getting good shots. The first half, they couldn't find anything. But this second half, the penetration and kick game, the drive and kick, which is their staple, has been there, and they've been able to penetrate that North Carolina defense. Foul on Smith. Back it to the line. Foul on the act. He has two shots, only a 63% free throw shooter. You can get coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Tournament at NCAA.com slash Final Four. Arv Albert, Steve Kerr, Craig Sager. We are at the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Located downtown St. Louis, the home of the St. Louis Rams of the NFL. And this is the first of our doubleheader. The winner between North Carolina and Ohio will face the winner between Kansas and North Carolina State in the Midwest Regional Final on Sunday. And the Bobcats of Ohio now down by one. Trailing by as many as 15 back in the first half over the first seven minutes of the first half. Kellogg played by Barnes. Catch and shoot by Offit, rebounded by Zeller. Another decent look, though, for Ohio. I mean, they've, they've found how they can play against this bigger team in Carolina. Bullock. Three-pointer for Lindsey Bullock, who has 11. Well, he was huge in that game against Creighton last week. Had 13 points and 10 boards, or uh, excuse me, and 8 boards. So Bullock with that beautiful stroke, he will be very important, particularly with Vaughn Struggle. Cooper firing from way downtown. Seven minutes remaining, second half. Tar Heels in possession. Henson cut off, the ball was deflected and recovered by Barnes. Shot clock to 10. Barnes to the fadeaway. Carolina has never needed Harrison Barnes more than they do tonight, and he has struggled throughout. Offit wide open. Another three for Offit. He has 22 points. That's his sixth from downtown, and Ohio is within one. Unbelievable shooting from Offit and Kellogg. Six for ten for Offit, four for five for Kellogg from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Barnes is now one for 12 from the floor. And they got about six minutes to play. Nice turnaround move by John Henson. That's something he's added to his game this year. More of the junior who could have gone to the NBA a year ago, stuck around to develop his game. And that's one of the areas he's really improved. North Carolina up by three. Cooper, beautiful hey. pass. Healing shot affected by Zeller. May have gotten a piece. Bullock, 
from three. Here comes Cooper. Met by White. Oh, he finds the open man. The stuff by Keeley. Once again, the Bobcats of Ohio within one. North Carolina calls for time. Ohio looks like the fresher team. They look like the more confident team. And they're starting to find a groove. DJ Cooper, beautiful find for Keeley. Let's take a look at our game summary. Ohio doing it with the three-point shot. They're doing it with steals. They have ten, which is above their average, and they are among the leaders in the nation of that department. And you can see how North Carolina's shooting has faded as the game has progressed. Yeah, they've lost their confidence. They lost their rhythm early without Kendall Marshall. And once Ohio got the confidence that they could actually hang with Carolina, they found their rhythm. I had a chance to talk to Clark Kellogg a few days ago. I called him to ask him for a, a scouting report on his son's team. I said, what do you think they have to do to win? He said, they, they probably have to make between 10 and 15 threes uh, to win the game. And looks like Clark was dead on. There's his son, Nick, who, who has four threes already. But 12 three-pointers for the Bobcats. Still five minutes to go. Nick has hit four or five from beyond that three-point line. Stillman White playing for the injured Kendall Marshall. Watts and White on the floor together. Watts was playing the point for portions of the game. Henson, got to go glass, kept alive. Zeller getting positioned down low. John Smith battling Zeller, trying to front him, take away that passing angle for the perimeter players of Carolina. Zeller putting a move on Smith. Smith played him well. Cooper all the way. Yes! And the foul. He went right at Stillman White. Ohio has taken a one-point lead. Well, it hasn't been Cooper's night shooting the ball. He's just three for 15. But he has maintained his aggressiveness. And that's a big one. The number 13 seed or lower to make the Sweet 16, six previous trips, has lost. Let's see what the Bobcats can do right here with DJ Cooper at the line looking to complete a three-point play. This is only the third free throw all night for Ohio. And has a three-point play and the biggest lead of the game for Ohio. Mark, the only way that trend is going to continue where the lower seed loses is if somebody can make a play for Carolina. Three all C ACC first teamers on the floor. Henson, Barnes, Zeller. Which one of them is going to make a play? Coming up on four minutes remaining second half. Watts with it. Barnes tried to squeeze his way and he stepped out of bounds. On the save, Bullock stepped out, so the ball back to Ohio. There's Roy Williams' reaction. Mm. A long night for Barnes, long night for Roy. And without Kendall Marshall, as this game has gone on, Carolina has looked more and more disjointed offensively. They have now committed 21 turnovers, which matches their field goal number. Baltic is back on the floor for Ohio, playing with four fouls. Cooper puts the move on Watts, and he draws the foul. Basket won't count as Smith followed up. Timeout, Ohio by two. He's been perfect at the line. He has scored the last five points for Ohio. A 7-0 run by the Bobcats. They lead it 57 to 53. And the steal. Cooper. Challenged by Henson. He tried to go to the other side, but Henson was not fooled. As Barnes curled in, he was hit out of reach in by Offit. 
And that is number four on Walter Offit. It's been interesting to watch Barnes here tonight, Marv. He's a, a player who likes his comfort zone. He can make a three, but he really likes that 18 to 20 foot range. And without Kendall Marshall here to get him the ball in the spots that, that he likes, he, he's really been out of sorts offensively. And you see the effect that Marshall has. It goes way beyond the numbers, even though he's one of the top assist men in the country. He's a guy who, who does much more than, than just tally up numbers. It's all about flow and pace. One and one for Harrison Barnes making his first appearance at the line. He has shot one for 12 from the field. He has five turnovers as well. Back tap kept alive by Bullock. Barnes for three. The one for 12 not bothering no Harrison Barnes. And, and that's what great players are supposed to do. On nights when you don't have it, you still find a way. Game tied at 57 as we come up on three minutes to play. Paul Baltic played by Zeller. Zeller has three. Oh, what a pass! Beautifully done behind the back, getting it to offense. Baltic has been terrific this entire half with his passing, and his teammates know when he has the ball, if you cut and space, he'll find you. Ohio by two. Hanson, yes, that's a two-pointer, had a foot on the line of the game, is tied. Wow, under pressure, Barnes and Henson both coming through with big shots. 14 points for Henson. Cooper draws the double. Baltic just one of seven from the field. Kellogg. Carolina stays home that time as Baltic goes to the hoop. Better job defensively. Shot clock down to six. Cooper for three. And a push off his call. Foul on Hall. That is number four on Hall. And the 10th team foul. So they're in the double bonus. And that's huge. That takes a lot of pressure off the shooter. Zeller will go to the line. He's an excellent foul shooter, 81%. But when you know you have that second one coming, it really eases you and, and uh, gets you a little more relaxed on the line. Zeller, three of five here tonight and 82 percent free throw shooter now hall will sit down keely checks in so four fouls on baltic Hoffert, and hall and roy williams will go with the bigger bullock on cooper and he slides stillman white over to off it Ohio in possession. North Carolina has a one-point lead. Kellogg looking for the pick from Baltic. Baltic goes at Henson, spinning his way, and he scores! Baltic won for his previous seven. But he had played so well, Mar passing the ball, that he, you could see the confidence in his eyes here later in the game. Just under a minute and a half remaining second half. Ohio has a one-point advantage. That's a three-point attempt coming up with air. Harrison Barnes way off, and Ohio will put it in play. Will Williams furious with his team, trying to encourage them to get a stop. He's yelling, get one stop, but a very poor possession from North Carolina and Harrison Barnes. You've got to get the ball inside and play off of Zeller. That was a forced three under duress. The Bobcats trying to pull off the huge upset to advance to the Elite Eight for the first time in school history. They'd be the second back team to do it. Kent State did in 2002 for final minute. Cooper. Cooper flips it up. A wild shot took a shot to the head. Also, it's a five on four for North Carolina. Cooper gets back into the play. Here's a long three by Bullock. Reggie Bullock from downtown. And North Carolina leads by two. 35 seconds remaining. Timeout taken. 
John Gross more of was screaming at DJ Cooper to get back defensively. Cooper thought he was fouled and he got hit in the eye. He got back slowly defensively, and that led to the open three for Bullock. North Carolina with a 63-61 lead on Ohio. There is our colleague, Clark Kellogg, oh, oh, working the doubleheader in Atlanta and uh, checking out his son, Nick Kellogg, who has shot the ball very well. He's hit four or five from downtown. Very pensive look by Clark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, this was the biggest play of the game. You see Cooper gets hit in the eye from Zeller. No call. And John Gross, look at his coach screaming, get back, get back. And Cooper... In that case, unless your leg is bothering you, you've got to sprint back. Even if you can't see, you've got to sprint back. And ultimately, Mark, it leads to the transition three by Bullock because Ohio's defense was scrambled. 35 seconds remaining in regulation. 32 on the shot clock. Ohio ball. North Carolina with a 63. 61 lead. DJ Cooper. Walter Offit. Offit. This time the ball and the foul. What a call from John Gross. Offit has been his best offensive player here. He clears the side with the smaller Stillman White, and that gives Offit the lane. The hoop and the foul, and now he goes to the line with a chance to put his team ahead. First appearance at the line for off at a 72% free throw shooter. White picks up his third, 25 seconds to play. So the Tar Heels can play it out. Now Roy Williams calls for time with 15 seconds left in regulation. Wow, <laughs> this is amazing. And now for Carolina, more of a really interesting situation. Every situation that they've been in this season, in this case, they've gone to Kendall Marshall. He's handled the ball. So now what do you do? I think it, the ball has to go to Harrison Barnes. He's not had a good night. But I think you want to put him in a post-feeding situation. Get the ball into Zeller and play off of him. But you really want the last shot. You don't want to give Ohio too much time. Are you surprised that the loss of Kendall Marshall has meant as much? I know a lot of people felt, hey, you look at that, that front line of North Carolina, the fact that you have, uh, you have three all-ACC players, you have excellent talent, you could get away with filling in with the freshman Stillman White and... Uh, Justin Watts, but it has not worked that way. I, I thought they would be disjointed, Marv, but not to this extent. I mean, they've been completely out of whack, and it just shows you the reliance on Marshall and, and the way they run their offense. It's so point guard dominated. And now with the biggest possession of the game here on the line, you've got to figure out a way to get the ball to the spot you want it to go. And the double bonus in effect, should there be a foul? White handles down to 10 seconds. The game is tied at 63. Barnes. Barnes lost it. Final second as Cooper fires and hits the side of the rim as we head to overtime. I didn't like the call, more of an ISO for Barnes, who was two for 13 to that point. Really doesn't get a good look. Great job defensively by Offit. Loses the ball. <laughs> Cooper almost finishes things here. Just barely wide right. And Offit did well to tap that ball ahead. So you see that <laughs> yeah. John Gross trying to will it home. And uh, oh, Clark. Handles it more low key fashion, <laughs> I'd have to say. <laughs> this the first overtime game of the tournament. Art Albert, Steve Kerr, Craig Sager. Of the Edward Jones Dome, St. Louis, Missouri.
North Carolina led by as many as 15 points over the first seven minutes of the first half. Ohio able to make the turn within seven at halftime. They kept coming. They've, they've had the lead briefly in the second half, and we're now tied at 63. Well, advantage Carolina because they're in the double bonus, so it'll be two free throws. And if they don't go inside to Zeller, then they deserve to lose. They've got to go inside, get to the foul line. Carolina still with a foul to give, and then ultimately Ohio will be in the one-and-one. One. Ohio able to control the tip. Bolton. Third one, Marv, that he's had go in and out. He's got a flat jump shot, and that ball is just nicking the front of the rim. He's got to get a little more arc on that shot. And Baltic playing with the four personal fouls. Bullock for three. Oh, he's had the hot hand. 17 points for Reggie Bullock. And five for nine from three. And remember, he hit the big one in regulation. Well, Carolina by three. Shot clock to 15. Cooper with no room along that baseline deflected out. Last touch by the Tar Heels. Bullock not only doing the shooting, Marv, he's doing the defending. He's guarding Cooper and using that size and length to bother the smaller guard. Meanwhile, Zeller just kind of playing center field underneath. And that's why John Gross will go to his, go to his bench for substitution, trying to get a little more spacing on the floor. Yeah, Reggie Keeley, the 6'8", 260-pounder, is coming. This Cooper from way downtown. Minute 15 gone by in this five-minute overtime. North Carolina with a three-point lead and the ball. Lines played by Kellogg. Now Baltic switches over. No direction offensively. No plan here. What's going on? Well, Barnes ends up with the shot and this time hits it. Boy, just bailing out a bad possession. Harrison Barnes just rising up and knocking down that tough shot. He's 3 of 16, but he has given North Carolina a five-point lead. Offen is rejected. The block by Henson. Tar Heels trying to take command. Bullock. Zeller tipping it. And here comes Kellogg in the open floor. It is reflected out last touch. Well, last touch by Ohio. So the Bobcats turn it over. Yeah, dangerous pass from Kellogg. It, he really didn't have it. He was looking for a teammate. I think it was off it on the weak side, but too much traffic. Marv, I know I've said it about a thousand times tonight, but throw it inside to Zeller right now. Continue to put pressure on Ohio. Continue to make them guard and make them foul. You got two free throws. You're in the double bonus. Two free throws on every foul. Ricardo Johnson has come on for Ohio, replacing Nick Kellogg. Approaching two and a half remaining in overtime. Keeley all over Zeller. Not allowing, in fact, fronting him now. As White was looking in that direction. Ten on the shot clock. Bullock has had the hot hand. Bullock on the drive, lost it to Keeley. Unbelievable. And just a, a horrible offensive possession. Again, completely out of whack. Cooper trying to use the pick. Keeley going at Zella, who has three fouls. And the foul is called. It is on North Carolina. In fact, it's on Zeller. That's number four. Sixteen foul on North Carolina. You see the numbers: twenty points, twenty rebounds for Tyler Zeller. And if his teammates would throw him the ball, he'd have thirty and twenty. Just under two minutes left in overtime. The quarter is off again. Cooper just has not been able to find the range. Three for 20 from the floor. One of 10 from the three-point line. Ohio has not scored in this overtime session. White. And it's deflected out. Last touch by Baltic of Ohio. 
Nick Kellogg will come back. Replacing Ricardo Johnson with a minute 35 remaining. Barnes having a tough time getting it in. Uh -oh. And the foul on Zeller, that's number five. And that's Barnes' fault, Marv. I mean, he put his teammate in a bad position there. Is that four now? We had it. Yeah, we have it as five. five. Yeah. Well, apparently that's number four. Okay. But Barnes, meanwhile, making a lazy pass. Carolina in position to finish this game. He had Bullock wide open in the corner. So North Carolina over the limit and Kellogg with a one and one. So it's four fouls on Zeller. First points for Ohio in overtime. Three point North Carolina lead with a minute and a half remaining in OT. No need to foul if you're Ohio. Plenty of time. Just play the shot clock out. Play solid defense, but you've got to secure the rebound if you force a miss. Shot clock to 10. Now to five. Barnes through the foul. Off the fake. It's on Kellogg. So the 6 3 Nick Kellogg facing the 6 8 Harrison Barnes. Great play from Barnes here. He just made a shot like this a few minutes ago. So you show the ball. Kellogg, knowing that he's at a size disadvantage, wants so desperately to challenge that shot. And he loses it. Loses his focus. He's got to stay down on that and make Barnes make the shot. Barnes now two of three at the line, a 73% free throw shooter. Weeknights with Conan, a slam dunk. Conan all new weeknights at 11 Eastern, 10 Central, only on TBS. Now, TJ Hall has come on for Reggie Keeley. A little offense defense there. This allows John Gross to really space the floor. And it forces Zeller to guard Baltic. And now you've got four three-point shooters. A minute remaining in overtime. Paul changed his mind. That's a travel. Yeah, fortunate that he was not called for a travel. Now Hall for three comes up with air. And now you have to foul if you're Ohio. And they are in the double bonus, but yes, there is the foul. It's called on Offit. So North Carolina to the line. But Kellogg, it appears, is getting set to do it on camera and then the grimace as he sees what's going on here in St. Louis. What a tough spot to be in for Clark. So emotional watching your son play at any point, but much less in the Sweet 16 against Carolina, a chance to get to the Elite Eight. And so off it picking up number five. And he departs with 20. Six points, an outstanding game for the junior from Indianapolis, Walter Offit. He was phenomenal. And his offense early in the game was the only thing that kept Ohio afloat. And then in the second half, he caught fire, made five threes. And he was the one, along with Kellogg, who really started to help their team believe that they could win. Offit with 19 of his 26 in the second half. But the Bobcats running out of time. Half minute left. Baltic with a long three-point attack. Rebounded by Barnes. See John Gross calling for the for the foul, and Cooper gave it. So we're down to 23.9. Ohio providing a scare for the Tar Heels of 
of North Carolina. Boy, did they ever. And it looks like Carolina's going to hang on, but Roy Williams and his staff have to be very concerned going into Sunday should they play without Kendall Marshall again because if Marshall can't go, now you're talking about going against either NC State or Kansas. Remember, NC State took them to down to the wire last week in the ACC tournament, two weeks ago, I should say. And Kansas, obviously, one of the best teams in the country with great guard play. Sterling White with his first points of the game. And off that pass, the ball back to the Tar Heels. They lead it by eight with 16 seconds remaining as they are headed to the Elite Eight for the sixth time in the last eight years, led by their seven-foot center, Tyler Zeller. 20 points and 22 rebounds. John Henson, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Reggie Bullock with 17 points and 10 rebounds. A terrific effort by the Bobcats of Ohio. They take North Carolina to overtime. And North Carolina wins it 73 to 65. So they go to 32 and 5 on the season. They have now won 12 of their last 13 games. It, it wasn't pretty, Marv, but Carolina made just enough plays between Barnes and, and Henson. A couple of shots late. And then Reggie Bullock, to me, was the player of the game. He was the one who bailed them out when they really needed it at both ends of the floor, offensively knocking down shots and then defensively doing the job on D.J. Cooper. And the Tar Heels took over in overtime. They outscored Ohio by the count of 10 to 2. For Roy Williams, it'll be an 11th career Elite 8 appearance. All right, let's go to Craig Sager. He has Roy Williams and... Tyler's ever Craig. Well, Coach, you have a terrific team. They got quite a scare tonight, but how much does Kendall Marshall really mean to this team? Well, he means a heck of a lot, but we got to play better than we did today. But uh, it's the first half. We played all year without him, much less the first game, but that's an excuse. You got to congratulate Ohio. They really were tougher than we were and with more intensity, but we had some guys step up and make some big plays, and I'm very happy for our guys. Tyler, at 20 points, a career high, 22 rebounds. But Steve Kirk kept saying they have to get the ball to him more and more. How frustrating was it not to have your point guard out there? Uh, it's a little, I mean, it's always frustrating when you lose somebody you played with for two years. And, uh, so something, just kind of get used to the new point guard. But uh, you also got to give credit to Ohio for uh, the, the game plan they had defensively. They did a great job of trying to keep it out of my hands. Is there any chance we will see Marshall on Sunday? You know, Craig, I have no idea. I don't think so because he still hasn't done anything. But... North Carolina is going to play on Sunday. We're happy about that. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. All right, Craig. And North Carolina will go against the winner of the second game that is coming up here on TBS. The matchup, Kansas and North Carolina State. So an overtime. Again, the final score, North Carolina 73, Ohio 65. Quite a rondo by the Bobcats of Ohio. Marv Albert, Steve Kerr, Craig Sager from St. Louis. to CBS now from Kentucky, Indiana. And we have Kansas and North Carolina State coming up. We'll take a quick look and then back to our studio.